Hey guys, you're all very welcome to our uh, first hangout in the build-up to uh, to the web summit. We're just waiting for uh, Robert Scoble uh, to join, um, and there's a few more people joining. So we're just going to wait about 60 seconds, and then hopefully Scoble will be uh, online and we'll kick things off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the story, bro. Yeah. Paddy, <laughs> you can put it on mute if you want to. You could put it on mute if you want to, just while we're waiting for Scoble to, to just like. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm just wondering, could all the people that have joined this actual hangout, accidentally the link that was supposed to be shared with Robert was shared with all of you? If you'd be able to disconnect uh, and then join the actual live feed, just go back to the actual original Hangout page, then uh, Scoble will be able to join. So I'd really appreciate if you'd be able to drop off. Thanks a million. Thank you. Um, I'm just, would somebody be able to find Laura actually? Yeah, so we could actually. Yeah. That's the mute button, hit there, Paddy. That button already it's there. It's unmuted now. Oh, it's All right, okay. Yeah. Testing. Yeah, I'll do it. So I, I just need the actual invitation to share with Robert Scoble. Surely I'll just feed it. Just. Hey, Laura, you're here. Okay. Guys, could everybody joining this uh, feed drop off? Can you can you put it on mute just for a second?
ไทยไปเลยสวัสดีสตอรี่Good morning, peoples. Hey, how hey. are you? Now we're ready. We're yeah, ready to rock and roll. Sorry about that. It turns out Google Hangout, you have to be following the account, otherwise they can't get an invite to you. That's no problem. Fluffy uh, actually fixed it all for us. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so it's 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 great to uh, it's great to connect. So I'd love to. I'm just going to for those people that are kind of. Uh, listening in, we've got over kind of 200 people uh, around the world. I just want to kind of frame the conversation first, and then introduce uh, you, Robert, and then also to my right, uh, Eamon. So this hangout isn't about the Web Summit; it's actually more about uh, conferences in general and figuring out how you kind of maximize your investment in attending uh, and your time. Uh, and we want to cover as many big and kind of little hacks that you guys. Uh, have discovered uh, over the years, so that's the kind of the basis uh, of uh, of the hangout. Um, Buddy, he muted himself. He's muted himself. Yeah, that's cool. Right. Okay, so um, so then so then to so then just for all those kind of tuning in, just to kind of the, uh, my two guests, Robert is perhaps the most influential kind of tech blogger in the world. Uh, he's truly passionate uh, about startups and has an exceptional depth of experience attending uh, conferences of all sizes and all types with lots of different hats on, whether that's as a speaker, whether that's as an attendee, um, or, as a, or as a blogger. Um, and then to my right is Eamon Leonard. Uh, he's a, an, an entrepreneur and investor who, uh, who's built, sold, and invested in lots of uh, companies and has attended uh, lots of conferences as a startup, as an investor, as an entrepreneur, and has also organized uh, some fantastic uh, conferences. And then my experience is really first as kind of a startup attending other conferences, and then more recently starting a conference and going to lots of other conferences, uh, obsessed with looking at the small details of other conferences from all different sectors, even tractor conferences that I've been to, um, in terms of how they actually improve the experience and the value for attendees, and then trying to work that into uh, our own conferences. So that's kind of the, uh, the background. Um, so Robert, I'd love to turn to you first um, and just kind of ask you, kind of at a, at, a, at a high level, what do you see as the point of, kind of conferences, uh, and you know, why do you think people should uh, attend them? Well, first of all, my wife and I uh, used to run conferences in the 1990s uh, for programmers, so so I've seen it from inside the conference and outside the conference, and as an attendee, as a lobby conner, somebody who doesn't have a ticket and is uh, sneaking in. Um, I've done it all. <laughs> um, the point, is, I mean, there's a, a few points. Serious point is you go there to learn, right? Um, uh, you're there to uh, try to get get knowledge about something that you don't yet not have knowledge of, and that's why, uh, you know, I go to uh, CES or South by Southwest or Web Summit um, or or Founders, right? Um, it's because I, I'm typically there to try to learn something that I don't yet know. So if I, if I need to le learn about Node.js, I might go to a conference that's about that. If I'm trying to learn how to manage people, I might go to a, a management conference. If I'm, I'm trying to learn some, you know, photography, I'll go to a, the photo marketing show and hang out with those people. Um, the, the second thing, and in fact, some conferences have noticed that the networking is what most people are there for. In fact, uh, David Hornick has a conference called The Lobby because he noticed people were just standing in the lobby talking all day long, so he said, get rid of the conference and let's just have the, the lobby <laughs> and, and, uh, talk a, and have networking events uh, in a cool place. Uh, and, there, and that certainly is important. In fact, I, I, I was thinking, what, 
what is my first piece of advice if I was going to Founders or, or uh, Web Summit? Uh, have have uh, somebody cover the Founders at night and somebody cover the Founders at day. And that's what I did because uh, there was a Founders going or a, a Web Summit going all night long <laughs> in Dublin. And uh, and I learned a lot by doing that because uh, I'm hanging out with some of the best entrepreneurs the world has seen. And often you find out uh, the, the real uh, uh uh, tips while you're talking to them over a beer, right? And and so before before you come to a conference, do you have any kind of golden rules in terms of preparations? I'll, I'll preface that by saying I remember last year we did a, a hangout with Alex Hawkins who just sold smart things to Samsung and he said for every hour he was on the ground at a conference on average he did about three hours uh, preparation and that took a huge number of people by surprise yeah. and he talked through a little bit of some of the kind of preparation that he'd do uh, in advance. For, for well, you, certainly, cer certainly if you're there uh, 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 to network you have to do those meetings ahead of time and that is, is a form of preparation I mean, I, uh, I'm already starting to schedule things for the Consumer Electronics Show, which happens in June, January, right? Yeah. And, in fact, I'm already signed up for several things that's happening at South by Southwest in uh, March of next year. So I, I call that preparation. And then certainly I, I'm looking through the classes, uh, looking through uh, the speaker list, uh, seeing who would probably be the best uh, use of my time in, in uh, sitting down and listening to somebody um, that you know before I got to TED for instance I that I that's exactly what I did I, I looked over that schedule with a very fine-tooth comb um, looking for which which ones I certainly cannot miss you know because there's some speeches you know you can be out in the lobby talking to somebody much more interesting than is on stage in fact you know, at TED, I was hanging out with Bill Gates out in the lobby for 45 minutes, listening to him talk to people about nuclear power, right? Wow. And that that was far more interesting to me than what was going on on at sta on stage at that time. But there's other speakers who I definitely did not want to miss, uh, uh, even though the networking out in the lobby was uh, of, of very high quality. Great. Uh, and and as a startup attending. Conferences. What, what what kind of preparation would you advise in advance? Well, I, um, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to ask Eamon Robert just for a second to to my right yeah. here. Sorry to stay Sorry. for a second there, Robert. Uh, yeah. So um, my experience with um, being a startup um, at a conference uh, first came about in 2009 at TechCrunch 50 in San Francisco, and uh, myself and my co-founder took the trip from Dublin to San Francisco and. Uh, we were probably three or four months into actually, you know, building, starting work on the product and figuring out some stuff. And we had we had software built, but we had never really showed it to anybody, and we didn't even know what our uh, our 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 um, you know value proposition was. I mean, how to phrase it, we didn't understand what our go-to-market strategy should be. Pricing was not even a thought at the time, um, and you know, elevator pitch, investor deck. These are all things that. We were totally unprepared for, and we saw going to a conference as an opportunity to get prepared for it, to get kind of to really to cram all the type of feedback that you could take two or three months to uh, to acquire just through meeting people over coffee or whatever, to cram that in to you know three or four days of concentrated uh, activities, and it's, it's incredibly emotionally draining, and it's a bit of a roller coaster ride, but. Um, <laughs> if I was to go back, we were totally unprepared, you know. And when you hindsight's a great thing, there was things that we should have done that we didn't do. We, I mean, we were barely able to get. I think what TechCrunch 50 did. That's disrupt now as a precursor to disrupt. Mm. Uh, I think what they did and what they maybe still do is you get a cocktail table and room for a pull up. And we were just about able to get our shit together to have a pull up. Uh, <laughs> we were, yeah. It, was a it depends on your goal, you know. As a startup, are you so early stage that you're raising money? Uh, you know, I remember um, uh, several people going to TED and coming home and saying, "I just got funded." And I'm like, "How did that happen?" And he goes, "Well, there's a lot of billionaires there, <laughs> and I'm sitting next to somebody, and I'm explaining their uh, my idea, and they get excited, and uh, you know, and I, and they're feeding off of my excitement, and uh, boom." So, uh, well, you know, you ju you just spoke about how you know you're planning meetings now for CES and even for uh, South by in March, uh, and so in some cases you're obviously you're kind of 
contacting people, maybe it's over email or maybe it's Facebook or maybe it's it's Twitter, just for some of the And they're contacting me too. Yeah, yeah, but I'm both ways. So, <laughs> well, what's a good email? What does a good email look like? I mean, is it six paragraphs long? Is it uh, long? What's important? Uh, in fact, in fact uh, uh, the, uh, the best uh, people are talking to me on Facebook and they're not trying to write a press release, you know. It, it, all you need is, hey, I, I, I know you're going to see yes. I'm going to see yes. Here's my goal. Uh, can you help? You know, um, uh, can I meet you? Can I? Can you introduce me to somebody? Right? Uh, one sentence. It's because it, it, people like me are very, very busy, and so uh, uh, don't ask for fifty things. I have a very clear ask, and uh, uh, and make it uh, fun for me to uh, chat with you. I, uh, you know. Some people uh, send me emails that are 15 pages long, and it, 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 it's too dense to figure out. But like, like you, you know, when you called me and asked me to come to Web Summit, it was just, hey, dude, you want to party with uh, Bono? I think that was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like, yeah, I do want to party with Bar Bono. Oh, yeah, can you do a speech for me too? Yeah, I can do a speech for you too. Uh, oh, can I uh, introduce you to the press? Oh, sure. <laughs> Three. So three sentences got a lot done, right? You don't have to uh, get very much more complicated than that, right? And does the same apply for you? So you're you're wandering around a conference, and, and people are coming up to you all the time, and they're trying to kind of, you know, they're trying to engage you. You know, what what yeah. what what advice do you give to people in terms of trying to engage an investor, engage a journalist? What's uh, what are the general rules of thumb from your experience? Look in their eyes and see if they're uh, if they're running to go and give a speech, <laughs> you know. Because sometimes I get pitched on the way the where I have a deadline. I have to be somewhere in five minutes, and uh, you're you're trying to pitch me in a time when I'm not able to sit and listen to you. So yeah. uh, you know, ask ask. Hey, can I uh, spend three minutes of your time right now? Sure. Uh, then uh, have a, a very Clear, one sentence uh, description of what makes you what, what what you do. Hey, I'm building a company that's going to be the Uber of you know uh, drones or whatever your pitch is. Huh, okay. And uh, what makes you different? Well, uh, if you're in a crowded space like like Google was the 17 search engine, right? Their pitch was, you know, uh, we have this new thing. Can you just try your favorite search in it? And and I did, and I said. How did you get rid of the porn? Because uh, I, my favorite site uh, search back then was Net Meeting, right? Because yeah. I had a Net Meeting website and I knew it in depth. And I said, "How did you get rid of the porn?" And then we spent an hour talking about PageRank and how it worked, and you know what made uh, what makes this thing special, and you know where did it come from, and all that. But you have to hook me in 30 seconds, right? And, and this is true. If you're not that way with your family and with your friends, you're not going to get uh, people excited about your company. You have to be very able to do an elevator pitch, a one-minute pitch where you get people excited, right? I, I um, my friend Saeed, who runs a Plug and Play Accelerator uh, here and has hundreds of companies in there, he said he funded somebody literally in the elevator on the way down. So three hundred eighty thousand dollars check was written in literally three minutes because he got excited by an idea, and that, and sometimes you'll meet people like this. You know, when you're when you're drinking with Bono, have something uh, to say to the guy. You know, <laughs> think about it. You know, let's say you have five minutes with Bono. What would you ask him? You know, uh, have an ask. Okay. You never know. Magic can happen. I talked Steve Wozniak out of forty grand when I was in journalism school. Right. I, it, it, you never know when th when somebody's going to change your life, and you have to be prepared. I would uh, be be prepared with a slide deck on your uh, uh, phone or iPad, uh, so you can uh, show it. Right. Yep. Uh, be prepared with business cards. Um, they're still needed, even though I hate them. Um, or you know, uh, at least ha uh, know your uh, LinkedIn account or Facebook account. Um, if you have some stickers that are small, hand those out. Those are memorable. Uh, my friend Andy uh, Grignon, who's running a new startup, and I, I think he might even be at Web Summit, built a book about his company. So he'll pitch you for a couple minutes, and then he, if he thinks you're uh, really interesting, he'll hand you a book and say, go read the book. 
And you're not going to throw that book away because it's a collector's item. It's beautiful. It was designed by the guy who designed the iPod. And he has his entire company story in there, customer quotes, a user interface, competitive advantages, uh, who's on board in terms of team members, who's on board in terms of investors, uh, what's the market size, all the usual kind of uh, stuff that you do in a, a slide deck, right? Mm -hmm. But he hands you a book, so you're, it's very memorable uh, uh, when you get a book like that because it's different. Uh, if somebody hands me a, a, a really nice uh, business card that's different, like Steve Wozniak hands me these uh, dye sublimated, or I'm sorry, uh, a laser cut uh, metal cards. I, I used to have one over here, um, you know, and they're very memorable. It's like uh, even if it, if it's not Steve Wozniak, uh, getting a card like that is memorable. It's like wh where did this thing come from, and why is this guy uh, spending so yeah. much money on cards, right? So, so I, I, I have a few then kind of quick questions. I'll just go to Eamon first. So, yeah. Uh, my instinct naturally going to a conference now is, oh, you know, I'll stay in an Airbnb. I talk to some, you know, pretty successful serial entrepreneurs, and their view is, mm, I think you should try and stay in the hotel where everybody is staying. Eamon, what's your view of that? Um, I think wherever you're staying, as long as you got a, you're close to the critical mass of people and you're prepared to camp out. Yep. You know, uh, it's, do whatever's within your budget. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, so even if it's you know younger entrepreneurs, friends of mine are not too proud to you know reach out to the network and see whose couch can I crash on. You know. But, uh, it's, uh, I stayed. Just, I stayed in the Las Vegas uh, hostel even when I worked at Microsoft, but even though I had an expense account because I wanted to stay with a friend who was staying there, right? And uh, and it was a fun experience, you know. It was a little different. It was a, it's a story now, right? You know. <laughs> um, also get the local experience as well, you know. If, if yeah, you meet people. You you know, I mean, when I interviewed at Microsoft on the way back, I was on the last row in a, I think Alaska Airlines, and I was sitting next to somebody, and I look at him, and he has a black. This was you know eight, uh, eleven years ago. He had a BlackBerry on. I go, oh, he's probably a geek. Start talking to him. Hey, what do you do? You go, oh, I run engineering for Amazon. Oh, really? What's your name? Larry Tesler. Oh, you were an executive at Apple. I knew something about him. Oh, yeah. And then we spent two hours talking about you know business and stuff like that. You never know where the really interesting uh, meeting is going to come from. By coming over to Web Summit, uh, you uh, usually everybody's on the same flight, you know, or same three flights. So you're pretty. Even inside the airport, on the way to the conference, you're networking. You're hanging out. You know, oh, there's Tony, Tony Conrad. Hey, Tony, what's going on? You know, and all of a sudden you're talking about what he's investing in and and and, and what's going on in, in his world. And he's making coffee for you. And seriously, he, uh, Tony Conrad is a coffee freak. <laughs> he uh, uh, carries his own little uh, custom right. French press. And his own uh, custom coffee beans that he paid like a hundred bucks for, and he'll make you coffee, and it's a lot better than United Airlines coffee. Let me tell you. <laughs> and, and, and so, when, when you know, different conferences um, heading out at nighttime matters. So, certain for 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 I, you know, I can only speak to kind of web someone in particular. We try to keep the conference going from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. But I'm I'm just. Going uh, to I was walking back into my into the elevator at 7 a.m., and my co-author Shell was walking out of the elevator to go running <laughs> and go to the conference. I go, nighttime founders is over, daytime founders is starting, <laughs> yeah. and he was going to the daytime founders, and I was going to the nighttime founders. And we were out till 7 a.m. <laughs> So, so in terms of the kind of rules of engagement at 7 a.m. in the morning at a conference, Eamon, I'm just wondering, you know, um, it's all about the walk of shame. So what? <laughs> what, what? 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 In 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 your experience, how 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 do you kind of seek out value uh, as as an attendee, you know, late at night uh, at a city in a, at any conference? What you know? Do you think there are things that change? I can certainly talk to some of the things that I can. Yeah, do. I think I think there's way. I mean, sometimes people will will tweet or Instagram. Um, where they are, people that you you know, tw Twitter is about connecting with people you want to know. Facebook's about connecting with people you already know. Um, so uh, there's Twitter lists out there, people who are speaking already that, that are, are um, or the type of people that you want to meet. 
Um, and so it's, it's sometimes these people will check in, sometimes they'll Instagram, sometimes they'll tweet. Uh, and it's I, mean, I don't want to call it stalking, yeah. but let's call it you know uh, engineered serendipity, right? <laughs> Where yeah. uh, you know you can be a bit smart about it. Um, there's a bit of luck involved as well, but there's also there's also the the referral part of it. So you could bump into somebody who knows somebody and a happens person. Not only that, but when when you're uh, you know when when you're in the lobby uh, during lunch or uh, in between a session. You get literally two minutes with everybody, at most, and there's a lot of opportunity cost. Uh, you know, when I'm talking to you, Patty, uh, Bono might be walking behind you, right? And I, all of a sudden, uh, oh, Patty doesn't seem all that interesting to talk to anymore. I want to go <laughs> hang out with him and take a shake his hand, right? Uh, and there's a lot of opportunity costs, and there, that's not a really good way to get to know somebody. But if we go out to a pub with five or six people, uh, and we stay out till midnight or one or two. Uh, all of a sudden, you're getting to know that person in a, in a much deeper level, and that uh, it, it uh, sets up a, a a whole bunch of things, right? Uh, relationships uh, that continue as friendships or business relationships that uh, get really deep really quickly, right? Because all of a sudden they're they're trusting you, and the, and they're all of a sudden bringing you in as a you know, uh, as an X Y Z, you know, investor, uh, uh, you know, technical co-founder, uh, uh, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So yeah, let, let, let me talk. I'm going to talk about a few. You know, um, over the last four years, persuading so many people to fly all the way to Ireland when there was no precedent to fly to Ireland, I kind of developed my own set of kind of hacks um, for late at night. So one of the things I found that was from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. At most conferences around the world, there tend to be organized dinners and parties that people have to go to. So Phil Libin could be doing the Evernote party, and you know, if I'm not on the list, I'm not going to get in. But come midnight, people tended to disperse, and they kind of found themselves in little kind of hotel bars. And if you just yep. track down those little hotel bars, everybody tended to be a little bit more inebriated, a little bit more open to meeting people. Um, yep. And a 12 to 3 a.m. slot, in my experience, was this kind of magical moment where you could actually, you would just somehow, using some kind of spidey <laughs> sense, figure out the 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 hotel, like the W Hotel uh, in Austin, or, or the Four Seasons, where you should probably just kind of go and have a have a whiskey. Yeah. I would try and always kind of do a buddy system, so kind of walking around on my own. Um, I'm sometimes a little bit shy, but when you're with somebody else, it kind of sometimes helps both of you to introduce people yeah. to other people. Um, so those are certainly two things. Um, so, so you know, when I was at the World Economic Forum, uh, I would I would get up every morning really early because it, it was such an important event in my life. Uh, you know, you don't get invited there very often. Um, if at all, you know, very few people get to go, and so I, I would, and I knew I was in the in the hotel with uh, Reed Hoffman and Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg and uh, a whole bunch of geeks. Uh, uh, all the uh, uh, technology award winners were that were in that hotel, and at 7 a.m., uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, taps me on the shoulder. I turn around and go, "Oh, hi, Mark." And he goes, hey, you want to take a walk? And I uh, sure. <laughs> Close up my laptop and go, well, I'm ready. Let's go. And I spent three hours with him without a PR person, without uh, an entourage around him trying to get his attention. And I learned so much about uh, him and his company on that walk that it's invaluable even today, right? He's still a Facebook friend, and I still probably can get his attention if I'm if I if I have something of value to him, um, that's the magic, right? Uh, uh, Tom C Tony Conrad n nails it as a hack. He 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 makes coffee for people, a and it's quite extraordinary coffee because it's uh, coffee that was hand picked by him and, and handmade, and uh, it's it's qu it's his thing. And so if if you go up to him and say, hey, dude. Uh, I hear you have coffee. When's the next? Uh, when's the next opportunity? <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, you're sitting there talking with him and talking with other cool entrepreneurs, and uh, boom, you're you're building a relationship that uh, is very deep and uh, uh, very interesting. Whether or not it leads to a business thing, it's just uh, now you have a friendship with somebody who's doing something extraordinary in life, right? Yeah. Same thing. 
Same thing. I, I remember uh, before I came to Web Summit, the, the year before, Mike Butcher kept posting pictures of him hanging out with Bono, right? I've met Bono before. I met him at Davos, right? But I shook his hand and said hi, and then he was off, and his entourage moved him along, right? But it's very rare you get to talk to somebody like that for any length of time, and that leads to fun stories and stuff like that. And it also leads to interesting connections because he, he he might be uh, getting excited about your startup and goes, you know, you should talk to X Y Z guy right over there is the guy who could actually make make it happen, you know. And boom! All of a sudden, you're uh, you're you're in, right? So I I have um I'm kind of a, we've got about four minutes left before to uh, just just to kind of stay in time. We we start about five minutes late. So I'm just wondering, wondering Eamon, so kind of post the event, you know, you tend to leave with a huge amount of business cards, and then other people that you just kind of connect with. I'll go to Eamon yeah. first, and then and then to you, Robert, to kind of wrap up. What for you? What does kind of successful post conference follow up look like? Um. I, I, I scan most of the business cards. Uh, if I remember, uh, if I was smart, I wrote on the back sort of what we talked about. You know, uh, I'm usually not that smart. And I'm usually not that uh, disciplined. But a lot of times, uh, uh, we'll start chatting with each other on Facebook right there during the conversation. I say that this is the best way to talk with me, and I and it's a. Uh, uh, fast, iterative way, and I can also tell you about parties tomorrow night and stuff like that. So I'll get you on Facebook, and that, that generally leads to, uh, if there was a, um, uh, a task that came out of this, I'll, uh, I'll uh, write it right there, and I'll, I'll remember it that way. Um, or I'll email myself really quickly and say, hey, I just promised uh, Patty that I would do X, Y, Z. So I'll, uh, later, when I'm uh, in a place where I'm more uh, uh, in front of my calendars and my email and stuff like that, and, and uh, in, a, in a place where I can uh, think through what I, w I need to say to you further, then I'll, I'll uh, take it up. But uh, you need to have a system to remind yourself what you uh, talked about. My boss actually folds the business card in, in different ways depending on if you're a customer uh, or a potential customer or somebody you need to follow up on. So he'll fold a different corner. Okay. So that when he gets back to his hotel room, he, he, you know, and he's not uh, drunk anymore, <laughs> he'll uh, remember, oh, that guy was a customer. I have to say thank you. And that guy uh, or that girl uh, needed help with their hosting, and so I need to get back to them, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to have a little system to get value out of your business cards because, yeah, I, I, you know, if, if you don't, you're going to get home with 200 business cards in a stack. And you're gonna go. I don't even remember meeting this person. What do I do with this? Uh, uh, no, 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 you're not gonna get as much value out of it. So for for Eamon, I'm just gonna ask Eamon, do you have any specifics around kind of post conference follow up? Yeah, um, I use uh, Full Contact to uh, find out more about their social um, presence, their media presence. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. Um, but with Full Contact, you can just throw their email address in, and you'll get a uh, maybe a 60, 70 percent match. Um, but I think yeah, the folding the cards is genius. Uh, separate separating the pockets, the ones I really really need to put into my left pocket, the ones I'll take a little bit longer and put them in the right pocket. Wow, wow. Yeah, I've I've got one or two things that I've really learned. I've I've always been so blown away by some really incredible, uh, you know, um, successful entrepreneurs. The amount they still continue to hustle when they go to an event that they. You know, they, they, they kind of they have this kind of some of them one or two of a mantra that I'll sleep on the plane on the way back, and they literally are going from 7 a.m. in the morning until maybe 4 a.m. the next day, and they do that two and three uh, days in a row, and they just don't stop meeting. I, and hustling. I, kind of I remember uh, uh, Liam Casey is one of my favorite entrepreneurs. He runs PCH in Shenzhen and, and grew up in Ireland. Uh, he called me one Sunday and he goes, "I have something to show you." And I said, "Dude, I'm leaving. I'm leaving to go somewhere. I forget where I was going. Um, I'm going to Tel Aviv tonight." He goes, "I'll meet you at the airport." And at 11 p.m., or uh, uh, he met me at nine. Uh, my flight was at 11. At nine, he meets me at the airport. That's the style of hustle that uh, the top end entrepreneurs do. And they do it even though they're rich, and even though they've been successful, uh, they keep hustling like that. And uh, you know, when you're around people who who, who make the world work, 
uh, it's a highly leverageable moment, right? And so, yeah, lack of sleep is uh, part of it. When I went to uh, World Economic Forum, I slept three hours every night because it was so important. Every moment in that place was extraordinary, you know? And, and, and same thing with founders, right? Every moment, I don't get to talk to Matt Mullenweg here in San Francisco. We both live, you know, 45 minutes from each other. I've never seen him here. He's always too busy. But I spent, I don't know, five hours drinking with him and 15 other people in the lobby, um, you know, uh, uh, last year. And uh, you're not going to go to sleep if that's the case, because I, I can sleep some other time. Yeah. By the way, uh, Tom Keen uh, says uh, to uh, 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 say to, hi to Tom in Cork, the real capital of Ireland. <laughs> 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 yeah, he knew that would get a laugh. But that's that's what's going on in real time, right? We're having a worldwide conversation with each other on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google Plus, on Elo now. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to get to each other uh, now, and so you you got to provide some value and and uh, and put yourself in play for happy accidents to happen. Well, to, to Eamon uh, and to Robert, uh, thanks so, so much. It's been great. Uh, re really, really eye-opening. And uh, Robert, I look forward to seeing you and Bono in, uh, <laughs> in Dublin in November. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Bye.